I've seen vitamin supplementation take a guy who was 68 years old, hadn't had an erection in 10 years, and give him one overnight. Boom. It's a really powerful hormone. It's one of the most effective things you can do to boost testosterone levels. Oh, you take it, it just stores, it builds up in the liver, and then it depletes calcium from the bones. That's not even accurate. At the end of the day, what we're really after is what's true. One of the most powerful things you can do to immediately correct tons of issues is just get vitamin Vitamin D was kind of the darling right around 2017, 18, 19, 20. And then now the contrarianism wave is up. It's telling you, you know, oh, you don't want to take vitamin D and there's all kinds of reasons why. So like some of the, some of the reasons I've heard recently are just like, yeah, it's rat poison. You don't want to take vitamin D, it's rat poison. <laughs> Where's that coming from? It's people that know what they're talking about. Okay, so there's no correlation or link to it? No, it's yeah. so where they're getting that from is when sunlight hits the skin, basically cholesterol forms seven dehydro uh, cholesterol hydroxycholesterol, and then that forms colocalciferol, and then that forms 25-OHD in the serum, okay? So that's your serum vitamin D. The intermediate form, colocalciferol, is what a lot of vitamin D capsules have in them. So it's also used like in rat poison because it just helps to kill rats, but not because it's toxic, just because that it drives up the calcium too much. You have a lot of people that are kind of new to the space that know just enough to be dangerous, but don't really understand it. So they're, they're on this, you know, a lot of them are on this trip. Well, you shouldn't supplement with vitamin D. The first thing that's wrong with that is, are we talking about chronic vitamin D or acute? You know, because acute has like a really good use case in a lot of different things. So if you're, number one, if you're low in vitamin D, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of studies that have shown supplementation with oral vitamin D, colcalciferol can increase your vitamin D levels to adequate levels, period. That's not even debatable. Like that's a real thing. Then you get into like really specific use cases and I've seen vitamin D supplementation do like incredible things. I've seen vitamin D take a guy who was 68 years old, hadn't had an erection in 10 years and give him one overnight. Overnight? <laughs> overnight, yeah. How Just, much did you like, give him? I gave him like 15,000 IUs at bedtime and I gave him some uh, melatonin to go with that, a little bit of K mm -hmm. and just like, Boom. What is vitamin D anyways? Why is it important for the body? It's a hormone. It's just involved in so many different processes in the body. Uh, it's involved in the immune system. It's involved in calcium homeostasis. It's involved in a whole bunch of things. So it's a really powerful hormone. You know, getting back to this whole like, oh, well, you shouldn't supplement with it. It's bad. Let's look at that. Number one, that's not empirically true. I empirically speaking, we can look at the evidence and say there's umpteen studies. I mean, thousands showing that supplemental vitamin D is incredibly useful. Like it increases vitamin D levels. And one of the most powerful things you can do to immediately correct tons of issues is just get vitamin D levels up. A lot of people are walking around in the 20s and 30s, you get that up to 50, 60, it's a new day. So empirically speaking, that's not true. Anecdotally speaking, I have personally seen vitamin D do miraculous things with acute short-term supplementation. It's one of the most effective things you can do to boost testosterone levels if you do it correctly. So I use it around getting cold and it's kind of an old formula, sunlight and seawater. Cold seawater and sunlight, you know, works for surfers. So vitamin D around getting cold helps testosterone levels. There's a lot of acute uses for vitamin D. If you're dealing with people who have gut issues, vitamin D along with a gut reset can be very, very helpful. So the key is just short term. Like we're not looking to stay on it forever. We're just looking to use it kind of acutely for a short period of time. And it's very, very powerful. Vitamin D is extremely useful. When you say acute, you mean like a couple days, a couple weeks? Yeah, so that's the big question everybody has. There are studies showing you can do 300,000 IUs of vitamin D over two days and normalize your vitamin D levels. You can go from low to adequate vitamin D in two days without hypercalcemia, without getting too much calcium. So one of the arguments that is used by the anti-supplement vitamin D crowd that presents a static view of vitamin D. So static means one thing goes one place and that's the end of that. You know, what they would argue is that no, vitamin D gets stored in the liver and then it depletes uh, calcium from the bones. That's not correct. That's not even close to correct. What really happens is vitamin D is not stored in the liver. Vitamin D is in di dynamic equilibrium. So transitional forms are in the liver and vitamin D requires calcium. So it gets it first from the diet. If it doesn't have it in the diet, it can pull it from the bones. But as soon as calcium is available back in the diet, then in the liver, the expression of the vitamin D receptor in the liver will actually trigger osteoclasts to pull calcium back into the bones from the diet. So there's this flux. There's this sort of circular back and forth going on between calcium in the bones, calcium in the diet, vitamin D levels, and it's in flux. That's a dynamic model. The static model, which is wrong, is, oh, vitamin D, you take it, it just stores, it builds up in the liver, and then it depletes calcium from the bones. That's not even accurate. 
And that's what you're hearing like in the influencer universe. All that to say, um, when I say acute, it can be anywhere from a couple of days to you know a couple of weeks. And you can supplement K2 with it. So if you have any concerns about too much calcium in the serum, just take take uh, K2 with it. But short-term vitamin D is one of the most effective supplements there is for short-term acute supplementation.